Hello, everyone. My name is Jian Feng. I'm a PhD candidate at Tsinghua University. The paper I will be presenting today is learning to simulate human mobility. Okay, let's begin. Due to the outbreak of COVID-19 around the world since January 19, 2020, spreading modeling becomes an emerging topic for health organizations and national governments. They need the predictive model to support the public health policy making. To accurately model the diffusion of COVID-19, the mobility tra trajectory of population becomes a fundamental component because it determines the strength and speed of the spreading to a large extent. The value among, among um, mobility generated every day via smartphone is a good resource for this modeling. However, they are hard to be directly utilized in the practice due to the privacy issue. Moreover, the direct replay of collected data is also not enough for the ones the simula simulation modeling. Thus, the realistic simulation of human movement generate massive high-quality individual mobility trajectory becomes a valuable and important problem. In this paper, we investigate the mobility simulation problem and propose a game-based framework to simulate human mobility. Based on the mobility trajectory metrics and the COVID-19 modeling, proposed solution achieves primarily simulation performance. The realistic simulation of human movement is not a new problem and has been well studied in the past decades by researchers from transportation and physical fields. We call this mainstream of this research works as the model-based methods. That's because they assume that human mobility can be modeled by limited parameters with explicit physical meaning, and these parameters describe the key characteristics and patterns of human mobility. Here we present two works from transportation field. Take time geo as an example. They first extract several temporal patterns from the large-scale mobility data, and then build templates based on these patterns and cooperate with the decision tree and the Markov model to generate a temporal choice of human mobility. Finally, they use rank-based EPR model to model the spatial choice of human mobility. This method relies on the assumption of typical mobility patterns and fails to generate various trajectories in the real world. Besides, with the success of generative adversary network. Recently, researchers proposed model-free methods to learn to simulate the human mobility behaviors from the real data. Different from the previous model-based method, model-free methods take up explicitly extracting mobility patterns with physical meaning, and they move the way to build a neural network-based generative model for direct learning to simulate the human mobility. Here are two example methods. Take trajectory again as an example. It first converts trajectories into an image, and then use the standard again to learn to generate such image-based trajectory. Finally, after translating the image-based trajectory with rules, we obtain a final synthetic mobility trajectory. This method ignores the natural characteristics of human mobility and leave it to the model to direct learning. Two kinds of methods. There are some limitations. For model-based methods, human mobility exhibits complex sequential transitions between locations which can be time-dependent and high order. Model-based model methods overlook these complicated human mobility regularities and thus fail to accurately model the real-world mobility behaviors. For model-free methods, learning par paradigm without utilizing the prior knowledge of human mobility patterns makes their learning procedure inefficient and ineffective. Besides, it's also hard for them to capture the hidden patterns of human mobility when learning with noisy and inaccurate raw data. Considering the advantages and the disadvantages of previous works, here we try to combine them together to obtain a balanced model with better simulation performance. As shown here, we propose our proposed solution follows the basic framework of GAN with a generator and a discriminator. Based on this, the novel contribution of our work is the various designs to introduce the domain knowledge and the physical regularity of human mobility into the framework to improve the overall performance on simulating of mobility. We first introduce the design of the generator. It contains two submodules. First is the sequence set to model the human influence. 
is a self-attention-based network to capture the complicated temporal transitions between mobility trajectories. Second is RegionNet to capture the urban knowledge is an attention-based network to model the effects of urban structure on human mobility behaviors. Next, we introduce them one by one. In SimpleNet, we first random sample location based on the population distribution around the whole physical space. Then we translate the discrete location. Here, for example, we use the base station or grids as a discrete location into an embedding vector. Then for each step generation, we also assign a discrete time for it. Based on the vector presentation, the representation of, of spatial temporal point, we use self-tension-based structure to model the complicated relations among these sequential points in the factory. Finally, we output the hidden vector and translate it into a location where the final linear layer. We think that is guided by the individual mobility data to freely explore in the urban space. We build vision net to enhance it by introducing the domain knowledge of urban structure. If structure is simple, we first build several relation metrics to describe the relation between different locations in urban space on different views. Here, we use three metrics. The first metric is the historical transition matrix, which is also the most important matrix. It's obtained by accumulating the historical transition among trajectory data. Trajectory data. We also use other two metrics to describe the relation from physical distance and urban fraction view. Then we use the last generated location to select the corresponding relation vectors from them. Finally, we use these relation vectors to filter the current hidden vector from sequence net to, and obtain a new hidden vector for the final location projection. Okay. This is the design of the generator. After the introduction of the generator, we introduce the design of the discriminator. In the discriminator, we first build a CN-based structure to complete the normal distribution task, distinguished task. We first build two-dimensional feature metrics from the input trajectory. We use convolutional units to protect the feature and finally classify it as the real trajectory or fake trajectory. However, due to the complicated characteristics of human mobility, it's not easy for the discriminator to learn a meaningful classification. Thus, we propose to introduce prior knowledge of human mobility to help the discriminator. Here, we design mobility regularity based loss function to encourage discriminator to find the important characteristics of human mobility. The utilized mobility regularities are spatial continuity and temporal periodicity. Due to the limitation of travel mode, the displacement distance of individual in a fixed time window is limited. We call it spatial continuity. Besides, due to the regularity of human life, the location visiting of our individual in different days is also highly periodic, periodic. And we call this as temporal periodicity. Based on these two basic but important mobility regularity, it is a loss function to enhance the discriminator. Spatial continuity loss is implemented to calculate the physical distance between nearby trajectory points, and the temporal periodicity loss is implemented to calculate the identity loss between trajectory points from different days but in the same hour of day. Now, we have a self attention based generator with urban structure knowledge enhancement and the same based discriminator with mobility regularity of their loss function. Next, we show how to train them effectively and efficiently. Actually, due to the discrete repetition of spatial temporal point in the trajectory, the training of our model is not easy. Here we follow the training parameters from sequence scan to train our model. It is regarding the trajectory generation problem as a Markov decision process. We use reinforce algorithm to generate learning signal for the generator. Besides, we also use Monte Carlo search to generate sequential rewards for the potential mobility trajectory during the generation process. That means for each potential trajectory, we complete complete this trajectory where we are an old generator and use a completed trajectory to generate classification loss for the original potential trajectory. 
Well, reinforced learning-based training is useful. It's still not enough for us to train a well-performed model on mobility simulation. Pre-training method for the framework. We consider to utilize the main knowledge of human mobility to help the training. We design two mobility regularity compare tasks to pre-train the generator and the disk meter before the formal training. For pre-training generator, we use the next location prediction task to pre-train the self-attention-based sequence net. For pre-training disk meter, we construct thick trajectories by destroying the real trajectory to help the disk meter to learn the crucial difference between them. The goal of destroying real trajectory is to destroy its spatial continuity and its temporal periodicity. So up to now, we have introduced the design and the training of the whole framework. Next, we will introduce experiments. To evaluate the performance of our framework, we use one private mobile operator dataset with more than 100,000 users and one public GeoLab dataset to support various experiments. Basic information on these two designs is shown in the table. For each of the sites, we discrete space and time and divide the host design into three partitions for evaluation. We compare our framework with three kinds of guidelines. First class is mobility prediction methods, including Markov model and deep model. The second class is model-based methods with simplified assumption of human mobility including Tanju and IOHMM. The final class is the GAN-based model-free methods by direct learning from data. They are standard GAN, image-based trajectory GAN, and the sequence GAN, which is also the well-known model for text generation. Here we define six metrics to measure the quality of generated mobility trajectory by comparing with the real data via JSON channel divergence. These metrics describe the characteristics of mobility trajectory from different views. For example, the first two metrics, distance and radius, observe the trajectory from the spatial view, and the third metric, duration metric, observes the trajectory from the temporal view. Okay, here is the final result. Uh, first, for, uh, for mobility prediction measures, Markov model found best on single distance metric. But this is not to say that Markov model is really good because we can find that its performance on this location is worth a lot. A real well-performed model should achieve balanced and prom promising results on all the metrics. Obviously, Markov model is not, good, um, is not a good one. For model-based methods, IOM model achieves best results on this location metric and the time zone model achieves second best results on radius and I rank metric on mobile operator data But you can find that model-based models perform not so well in GeoLab data set. We think this is due to the data quality, small volume, and sampling mechanism of GeoLab data set. Due to these factors, the mobility regularity of GeoLab data set is not so obvious. Thus, it cannot, it is not so important in the mobility modeling. So, mobility model-based methods fail to perform so well on this GeoLab dataset. For model-free methods, we can afford best by getting second best results on two metrics on mobile operating set and second best results on file metrics on GeoLab dataset. Compared with previous model-based methods, model-free methods do not rely on the assumption of regularity of human of mobility dataset. Thus, it can achieve better performance on GeoLab data set. Finally, our methods perform best on most of the metrics on two data sets. Even on metrics we are not best, our results are very close to the best results and become the second best results. Thus, from the view of metrics for measuring the difference of genetic data and real data, our model is the best model. We all visualize the synthetic data from different view to present the quality of it. First, we first present two samples of generated trajectory in the left figure. We can find that these two trajectories follow the important mobility regularities, including the spatial continuity and the temporal periodicity. Right figure presents the temporal population variation of two sample regions. We can find that the temporal aggregated aggregation of synthetic data is very similar to the real data. Further, we present a spatial population distribution 
uh, with the identity data and the real data in the left figure, you can find that the two spatial distributions are also very similar. And this visualization results also demonstrate the good quality of our data, synthetic data. Maybe you use the uh, mobility data to conduct the COVID-19 spreading simulation. Parameters for COVID-19 simulation is from the reference paper. The main idea of the simulation is to repeat the thriving process in the synthetic data. In this way, better synthetic data should get more similar results to the real data on the spreading simulation. Detailed simulation procedure is as follows. We first random select some people as exposed. Then we record susceptible people who are co occur in a spatial unit with exposed people. Then these susceptible people become exposed with probability beta, weighted by a close contact ratio C. Then we update other status. We repeat the, this experiment in real mobility data and the synthetic data. Finally, we can measure the difference between them, and we can find how and we can use these results to judge the quality of the synthetic data. Results of the simulation are presented here. We conduct the simulation on mobile operator data From figure, we can find that compared with the best baseline time geo, synthetic data from our model achieve lower MAP in spreading simulation. This is also this also demonstrates the practical value of our, our, our model in the practical applications. We also present uh, some extensive results to further demonstrate the usability and uniqueness of our synthetic mobility data. First, uh, to evaluate the usability of our synthetic data, we use the next location as the evaluation task. As the evaluation task, we first use a part of the real trajectory data to conduct the mobility prediction task with different prediction measures. This will provide us a, a base, base, baseline performance. Then we use different mobility simulation measures with the left real data as input to augment, augment the previous training data by doubling the training instance and repeat the mobility prediction task again. Then we can calculate the performance again after the data augmentation and the, the results are present in the left figure. We have then that our framework achieves the largest performance gain on the mobility prediction task with state augmentation settings. Okay, further we to improve to prove that the high quality and the realistic generated mobility trajectory is not the simple copy of the real trajectory, but the new trajectory. We perform an uniqueness testing of it by comparing with real data. We calculate the overlapping ratio of all the generated trajectories with all the real trajectories and select the most similar one, three, and five real trajectories for each generated trajectories to present the empirical cumulative distribution of their overlapping ratio in the figure. And this figure shows that more than 80% of the synthetic trajectories cannot find any real trajectories who have more than 15% of overlapping ratio with them. This presents the uniqueness of our data. Okay. As a conclusion, uh, in this paper, we propose a game based framework MoveSim to support the realistic uh, human mobility simulation. And in this paper, we try a simple but effective way to incorporate domain knowledge into the game based mobility simulation framework. In the future, we will explore other flexible modeling methods like Bill and hope we can build controllable methods to enable the simulation of more complicated counterfactual scenarios. Our work is still a primary try, and we hope it can inspire the related studies to help the community to build more efficient and effective mobility simulation frameworks to support the epidemic modeling and other potential applications. That's all my presentation. You can find our public calls, public calls in this website, uh, in this address. Hoping it can help you. Thank you.